Today, I will prepare something delicious. It's warm, hearty and just perfect if you need a pick-me-up kind of recipe. Cut up some veggies, fry some ground beef and let it go for an hour. It's almost not fair getting something this tasty with so little effort. Please follow along as I share my version of a farmer stew with you. Ingredients will be in the description as always. First, we'll get to work on the onions. Dice two onions into cubes by removing the root and the stem. Cut the onion in half and lay it on the flat side down. And then you slice the onion crosswise. Turn the onion 90 degrees and then continue dicing it into cubes. I didn't show it here, but I always save the scraps in a plastic bag in the freezer. I'll tell you why you should soon too. Take the diced onion and put them aside. Next we're gonna peel 3 carrots. Take the unwanted pieces off the carrots and also put them in the scrap bag. Anyway, slice them down the middle and lay them on the flat side down. Slice the carrot down the middle again to create quarters and then you cut these quarters into bite sized pieces. Put them aside. So here's a nice trick for cleaning out the bell pepper. Take the top and the bottom off. Then you can see the membrane that connects the seed house with the flesh of the bell pepper. There's four of them on this bell pepper. Take your knife and simply slice through them one by one. When you've done that, you can easily lift the seed house and discard it. Cut the bell pepper into strips and those strips into bite-sized pieces. Take the bell pepper pieces and put them aside for now. Let's prepare the mushroom. Take the stem off and cut them down the middle. Lay them on the flat side down, then slice them again into smaller pieces. Let's set them aside and then we start working on the potato. Start by peeling all four of your potatoes. And then you do what you've done with most items today. Slice them down the middle, slice them down the middle again, and then you cut the potato into bite-sized pieces. We can now set the potato aside for later. Next we're gonna peel and finally mince four garlic cloves. If you have pieces of garlic that are too small to work with, put them in the scrap bag directly. A tip for peeling garlic is that you lightly crush them beforehand, which makes the skins almost fall off on its own. When you've minced all the garlic and put the skins in the scrap bag, we can move on to making the stew. Now that all the prep work is done, bring out a frying pan. Add some oil and butter to the pan and wait for the butter to become ready. You know it's time to add the onion when the butter is silent. Add the onion to the pan and cook them until they turn translucent. When the onions have cooked for a few minutes you can add the mushrooms. And not long after that you can also add the garlic. We add the garlic last not to burn it. We cook the vegetables until they've gotten some color and then we set them aside for later. In the same pan, add some oil, because now it's time to fry the meat. Add the meat in stages, not to overcrowd the pot. While the meat is cooking, I use a potato masher to help separate the meat. And I, I believe it was Joshua Wiseman who showed me this in one of his videos once. I believe he said it was Taco Bell who did something similar, but... Uh, don't quote me on it. And it's also more effective to use a metal one, but my Teflon pan would absolutely kill me if I used it. Anyways, when the meat is cooked, you can add two heaping tablespoons of tomato paste. I add the tomato paste here just to give it a chance to bloom in the pan before going into the stew. Be sure to save all of the juices that are in the pan. It's an absolute flavor bomb. With the meat fried, we can now go ahead and make the stew. Add one liter of beef broth. That's about four cups for my American friends. 
Then you go in with the onion, mushroom and garlic mixture. Stir a few times and then you add the meat, followed by the potatoes, carrots and about 500 milliliters of water. That's about two cups of water. Now that we've added most of the ingredients, we can go ahead and add the spices too. We add salt to taste as always. Then we add about two teaspoons of black pepper, four teaspoons of paprika powder, and a teaspoon of thyme. Stir the ingredients to combine and let it simmer under a lid for 40 minutes before you add the bell pepper. When you're about to add the bell pepper to the stew, now it's a great time to taste for salt. And then you can add the bell pepper and let the stew go for another 20 minutes or until the bell pepper has softened. I'm sure that if you like this recipe, you will absolutely love my porter stew recipe. Why not check that out next? I'll leave it here on the screen for you. Add as much stew as you would like to a bowl and serve together with some freshly baked bread. You can also add some cream fish or sour cream. What about all of those scraps that we've saved today? It's uh, absolutely awesome that you've started a scrap bag and probably one of the most delicious things that you can have at home. In my next video, I will show you how you can make the most amazing stock from these scraps. The link will of course be in the description. What do you think about the farmer's stew? Do you think you would make it? I'd love to know.